You know, the hardest part about every one of these videos is trying to think of the first thing to say. Because I say the same thing every single time, and I'm trying to do it different. And every time, I just end up going back with saying the same old boring thing. What's up guys? Logan here with Logan Built. Back here at the house tonight to continue where we left off with our four wheel drive front axle discussion. Uh, so we're gonna pick back up tonight with camber, tow, and steering ratio. Uh, we'll start with camber because there's really nothing to camber. Uh, essentially what camber is, is would be the front wheels uh, laid in if you're looking dead on at the vehicle. They would be tilted like this or they'd be laid out. Uh, so that would be positive and negative camber. Uh, you don't want any camber on a four wheel drive. If you have a solid front axle, so not an IFS, a straight front axle, then you should have zero camber. Uh, if you do have camber, then that means that you have a wore out ball joint or a kingpin setup and you need to get that fixed. Uh, so then moving in to tow. Uh, tow is relatively simple as well. Um, there's a lot of different variances on tow with different applications, but we're going to talk specific to a uh, solid, not IFS front axle. Uh, a a four-wheel drive is naturally going to want to tow the front tires in a little bit as you power it down the racetrack. So you don't want to start off with a bunch of tow because it's only going to make it worse and then you're essentially trying to drag a, a crooked front wheel the whole entire racetrack. So you really only need about a half inch of tow at the most um, to just keep the vehicle naturally wanting to go forward and straight and, and to compensate for the fact that it is going to tow in a little bit more under power. Uh, the easiest way to measure your tow, if you don't have uh, an alignment rack or access to an alignment rack, uh, <clears throat> there's a couple companies out there that make basically a piece of angle iron. Uh, you can actually make it yourself, but it bolts to the face of your hub. And uh, then you can bolt one on each side and you can run a tape measure from one side to the other, one side to the other and you can get this wheel dead straight, nice and straight, your steering wheel straight, everything is, is straight and forward. And then you can use your tie rod bar, uh, if it's factory or aftermarket, to shorten it to bring the front wheels in, tow them in together just a little bit. Uh, so basically each wheel will be towed in a quarter inch on each side. <clears throat> and uh, so essentially your measurement up here will be a half inch shorter then your measurement in the back, that's how you know you have a half inch of total toe. And then steering ratio is, is the big one that we're gonna dive into really tonight. Um, steering ratio is essentially the relationship of how much you turn the steering wheel to how quickly it turns the wheels on the truck. So the closer, the tighter the ratio is on the, on the steering box, so the closer you get to one to one, uh, the more nimble and fast it's going to react to when you're turning the wheel. And you would think that in a four wheel drive drag racing application that you're going to want to be able to control this thing and drive it, right? Well, actually you end up doing the opposite by doing that. The closer your steering ratio is to one to one, so the, the tighter the ratio, the, the more effect you have on, you turn the wheel this much and it, and it moves the truck a lot one way or another. So what ends up happening is, is you, you're chasing it the whole track because you're overcorrecting and overcorrecting. Um, Don Garlitz experienced this when he moved from a slingshot dragster to a, a rear engine dragster setup. And he took the, the front steering exactly how it was, same ratio and everything off the slingshot and put it in his new car. And they could not make any runs with this car. Every time he would take it out, it would drive one way or the other. And he said that he put it in the grass multiple times. He said if the, there was concrete barriers back then, he would have aborted the project because he would have crashed it so many times. And one night he was talking to his guys and he said, if I didn't know any better, I would say the steering ratio is wrong on that car, but it can't be because that's exactly how it came off the slingshot. And his guy working with him said, Don, 
this isn't a slingshot. If we should slow the steering ratio down, just tell us and we'll do it. Well, they slowed the steering ratio down and right down through there that car went. So steering ratio is way more important than what a lot of people think. So for drag racing, we want the steering ratio to be further away from one to one. Uh, we want to be able to turn the wheel a little bit and not have much input on the front wheels. That allows us to not overcorrect and constantly fight it the whole run. The, it gets to kind of do what it wants and you can put a little bit of wheel input to it and you're making slight adjustments. So it's easier to keep it going straight and not be chasing it the entire time. Uh, when I built my truck, you've got to remember, I've been building this thing over eight years and a steering box is something I bought a long time ago and I bought a quicker ratio steering box. And my thought was, oh, I want to have more control over it. Well, really, I kind of hurt myself by doing that and I've actually experienced the fact that I do need to go back to a standard ratio, a stock ratio steering box to slow the front end down so when it does get into a situation where it wants to go one way or another, I'm not fighting it back and forth the entire time. Uh, the stock steering ratio on this truck is 20 to 1, which is pretty sloppy. So if you've ever driven a first gen, that's why it's like sailing a boat out there. And then uh, on the second gen, they went up to an 18 to 1. To, to tighten that up just a little bit. Well, this is a 13 uh, to one ratio, and I've seen some 16 to one ratios, so this thing's really, really too tight for what I'm doing. Luckily, I've had enough experience with driving JP's truck that I don't overcorrect it, but it's still really easy to do when you have too much steering ratio. So between the caster trying to be laid back or laying it back so that way it tries to naturally keep you going forward and then taking steer, steering ratio away from it to, to help you not overcorrect it. That's probably the biggest two uh, secrets of this front axle and really using this front axle to help you keep going nice and straight down the racetrack. So I really just can't emphasize enough on caster and steering ratio. So hope you guys found this one uh, helpful. And the uh, next one that we're going to get into, we're going to talk about uh, limited slip differentials versus locking differentials versus open differentials. And uh, that'll probably just be a whole video in itself just to get that all covered. So uh, like always, guys, if you want to stay up to date on this content that I'm putting out, uh, like and subscribe. Uh, click that bell icon so you can be notified every time I post a new video. But as always, I appreciate you watching, and we will catch you on the next one.